Senator Lindsey Graham has shown time and again that he is incapable of acting like an adult, and he always tends to embarrass himself and act the most childish when everyone is watching during these confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominees. And this time, it's no different. So on day two of the confirmation hearings for Judge Kandanji Brown-Jackson, he made it very clear in a rude and condescending way that she was not his first choice. But he's butthurt that Michelle Childs wasn't the one who was selected, and that was his first choice out of the options that Biden was considering choosing. And the reason why is very apparent, because Michelle Childs is a more corporate-friendly pick, a more anti-labor pick compared to Judge Jackson. So he's mad about that, and he's, and he's going to make it very clear that he thinks her being nominated is problematic. Take a look. What is your judicial philosophy? So I have a methodology that I use in my cases in order to ensure that I am uh, ruling impartially and that so your judicial philosophy is to rule impartially. No, my judicial philosophy is to rule impartially and to rule consistent with the limitations on my authority as a judge. And so my methodology actually helps me to do that in every case. So you wouldn't say that you're an activist judge. I would not say that. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll have a 20 minutes more later on, but here's what I would say. That every group that wants to pack the court, that believes this court is a bunch of right-wing nuts that are going to destroy America, that consider the Constitution trash, all wanted you picked. And this is all I can say, is the fact that so many of these left-wing radical groups that would destroy the law as we know it, declared war on Michelle Childs and supported you, is problematic for me. Thank you. I've got a recommendation, Lindsay. How about you shut the fuck up and take the L? Her being confirmed is not going to change the ideological makeup of the Supreme Court. You will still have your 6-3 far-right supermajority. So she's going to vote in the same way that Breyer voted, most likely, and nothing changes. You'll still most likely have your overturning of Roe v. Wade. You'll still have your pro-corporate, anti-labor decisions being handed down time and again. So why do you have to have one more pro-corporate choice? Why do you have to make it known that you're not happy with her? Who cares what you want, Lindsey Graham? Who gives a shit? Nobody cares what you think. Shut the fuck up. He is insufferable. Now, he is really upset because the uh, every group that wants to pack the court and believes the court is a bunch of right-wing nuts that are going to destroy America, that's true, by the way, uh, that consider the Constitution trash, which is true, by the way, uh, they all want you picked. She can't control who supports her. How many Nazis in your state support you, Lindsey Graham? Can you control that? I mean, I wonder why people who are racist and far-right support you, but can you control that? No, of course not. So who cares? Why does she have to denounce people? I'm assuming that's what he wants, who support her. And don't pretend like you also don't like court packing because that's what Republicans effectively did over the course of the last couple of years. Mitch McConnell stole not one, but two Supreme Court justices from Democrats. He stole one from Obama, claiming that we don't nominate or confirm Supreme Court justices during election years. And then they confirmed Gorsuch. And then a week before the 2020 election, once RGB died, they confirmed Barrett. So you believe in court packing. You just want to pack it with far-right extremist activist judges. But yet he claims he's against activist judges. No, you support activist judges. You've advocated for them vociferously in front of all of us. So nobody believes what you're saying here. And it's funny that he actually thinks it's absurd to suggest that the far-right supermajority on the Supreme Court is going to destroy America when we might literally witness the return to unsafe, illegal coat hanger abortions in 2022 in America. And we have one Supreme Court Justice, Clarence Thomas, whose wife was in bed with insurrectionists. So <laughs> when you have anti-democracy, pro-authoritarian people on the Supreme Court, because I'm assuming Clarence Thomas is ideologically, uh, uh, ideologically aligned with his fucking wife, obviously, then yeah, they're pretty fucking extreme. So don't pretend to be angry when people call that out. Um, you got what you wanted. So just 
take the L on this one Supreme Court justice, but he can't do that. Now, the issue of Guantanamo Bay is going to come up, and he's going to go on a rant, call for the deaths of people being held indefinitely and illegally at Guantanamo Bay, and then he's going to angrily leave. He, he again, he is a child, but take a look. On the issue of Guantanamo, there are currently 39 Guantanamo detainees remaining. The annual budget for Guantanamo is $540 million per year, which means each of these detainees uh, is being held at the expense of 12 or $13 million per year. If they would be incarcerated at Florence, Colorado, the supermax prison, federal prison, the amount would be dramatically, dramatically less. Since 9-11, nearly 1,000 convicted in the United States on terrorism charges. Since 2009, with the beginning of the Obama administration, the recidivism rate of the Guantanamo detainees released is 5%. So Mr. One, Chairman, according to the Department, uh, Director of National Intelligence, is 31%. Somebody is wrong here. If you're going to talk about what I said, I'm going to respond to what you said. If we close Gitmo and move them to Colorado, do you support indefinite detention under the law of war for these detainees? I would just say uh, I'm giving the facts. And I the want answer to make, is no. I want to make sure that it's clear. The 31% you referred to goes back to the year 2009. What does it matter when it goes back to we had them and they got loose and they started killing people? Well, I could just say that uh, if you're one of the people killed in 2005, does it matter to you when we release them? Suggest that a president of your own party released them in. I'm suggesting the system has failed miserably and advocates to change this system like she was in, was was advocating would destroy our ability to protect this country. We're at war. We're not fighting a crime. This is not some passage of time event. As long as they're dangerous, I hope they all die in jail if they're going to go back and kill Americans. It won't bother me one bit if 39 of them die in prison. That's a better outcome than letting them go. And if it costs $500 million to keep them in jail, keep them in jail because they're going to go back to the fight. Look at the friggin' Afghan government. It's made up of former detainees at Gitmo. This whole thing by the left about this war ain't working. Let me also note that Larry Thompson, who served as Deputy Attorney General under President George W. Bush, Orrin Kerr, Special Counsel. He is a man-child. I don't know what else to say. And I love how he just denounced the leftists who supposedly think that the Constitution is trash, but yet he's making the case for Guantanamo Bay. Basically, a constitutional free zone. We're holding people there indefinitely. Do you not believe in habeas corpus? Lindsey Graham, I thought that you are a constitutional purist, but yet you're arguing in support of Guantanamo Bay. He's so inconsistent. He's so inconsistent. And yet he thinks that it is absurd to suggest that Americans feel uncomfortable with the fact that we have far-right extremists on the Supreme Court. Well, we feel uncomfortable because most Americans aren't as barbaric as Republicans, even if they vote for Republicans because of other issues and culture war issues. I think that most people disagree with your barbarity as a party. In Lindsey Graham's home state, they just brought back firing squads in 2022. So in this same year... Think about all the things that the GOP has done to prove how ruthless and barbaric they are as a party. In Texas, they're investigating parents with trans children and treating them as child abusers while they simultaneously argue for parental rights when it comes to mask mandates at schools. They're banning freedom of speech in schools under the uh, guise that gays are grooming kids. And if you talk about the fact that some kids have gay parents, apparently you're grooming them. According to today's GOP, women may have to resort to back alley coat hanger abortions again the year 2022 most conservatives are just against modern medicine in 2022 to the point where they're vocally anti-vax they outright reject science and climate change they reject the teaching of history in schools a sizable chunk of today's gop delusionally thinks that the election was stolen from a senile old racist in 2020 and again in lindsey graham's home state they brought back firing squads in 2022 so we're going backwards. We're getting more barbaric with time when most civilized egalitarian countries are moving forward. And it's not always the case that progress is linear, but we've gone back a lot, largely due to the far-right extremist Republican Party here. Most conservative parties around the world are not this extreme. The Tories in the UK, they're extreme, but they're not this extreme. The conservatives in Canada, they're extreme, but they're not this extreme. 
Republicans are off the political spectrum. They are absolutely insane and barbaric. And yet Lindsey Graham thinks it's absurd to point that out. I mean, your behavior here, Lindsey Graham, matches your barbaric ideology. Republicans are basically feral at this point. They'd like to take us back to the Stone Ages if they had the ability to do that. They're fucking insane. And, you know, this just... This behavior that we see from him, where you storm off defending Guantanamo Bay, it's just, it shows how out of touch, how insane today's GOP is. So, I mean, uh, I don't know if I expected anything different from Lindsey Graham. I, I certainly didn't, but it's just to see him storm off on day two and work himself into a frenzy for no particular reason, for no good reason. You can disagree with people who are against Guantanamo Bay, but to storm off, I just, I don't understand him. The only thing that I could say about Lindsey Graham is that this man is a fucking child. And anyone who votes for him should be ashamed of themselves. You voted for a man, baby. Congratulations, people of South Carolina. You voted for somebody who's a fucking child. I hope you're happy with this choice of this corporate clown who gets in there and represents corporate America, and not you. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.